Hello, everyone. You have to give me a second because I have a surprise that's buried a little too deep right now. <laughs> My name is Rylan, and I am an inventor. And being an inventor means I get called crazy all the time, so I'm ready for you. <laughs> I have a big dream I want to share with you today. I want to live in a world where everyone has a magic wand. Does that seem crazy? Who here already knows about my project? All right, it is crazy, because <laughs> only like five hands went up, so that's awesome. <laughs> okay, so a world where everyone had a magic wand. It's a crazy idea, but I'm here to tell you today that it's possible because of a technology called 3D printing. If you think about it, a 3D printer is really a lot like a magic wand. I mean, you wave your mouse around just right, and then real objects emerge on your desk. Poof, just like a magic wand. It's amazing that technology could actually possibly do something completely magical, but it happens over and over. The internet's just like that. And I'm going to remove some sticky notes from my screen. <laughs> hey, they're great, I should probably read them. <laughs> I do everything you say, oh, it's wonderful. Bang on, okay. So, a world with a magic wand. I actually think that technology, well, one of technology's answers to the magic wand is the 3D printer. Now, who here doesn't know what a 3D printer is? Okay, cool. I better cover that. <laughs> I better cover that. Most people do, but... Okay, a 3D printer, I've got a great analogy for this. It's sort of like if you were making a cake and you had that, uh, that bag that the icing is in. And you could, I, I could ask you, if you had that bag, could you squeeze out in just the right pattern to make a cube? Could you do that? Just kind of stacking it. Don't say no, you gotta say yes, you gotta. <laughs> Otherwise you don't get, okay, so you squeeze it out and you keep going and you make layer after layer and you could just make like a cube of icing or a castle of icing. Okay, now if you got a robot to hold that bag and squeeze out the icing, then you would have a robot that can make anything your computer tells it to. So that's, that's kind of what a 3D printer is. Okay, so, <clears throat> there's just one problem. Whew. It's a big problem. They cost thousands of dollars. Really, really good ones cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, and that's really getting in the way of everyone owning one, including myself. I usually try to stay away from working normal jobs so that I can be an inventor, which makes me broke. I'm always broke. And when I get really, really broke, I get a job for like three weeks. <laughs> okay, so, and that's how I started working on this 3D printer. <clears throat> so, but price aside, let's just picture what a world with a lot of 3D printers in it would be like. Have you, ever, have you ever had this experience? You're walking in a store and, oh, look at that. That's exactly what I need. Oh, not quite. Not quite. If only they had... Why didn't they think of this one little thing? Who has had that experience? I think I see everyone's hand. Yeah, okay. Well, if you had a 3D printer and you were printing your project, or sorry, you were printing your product, then you could make that change right before you print it. And with the internet, you could share that change with everyone. That would be amazing. Or what if you invented the Kazula Bob? Kazula Bob. I don't know what that is. I, I just made up that word. I love making up words. <laughs> but you invented the Kazula Bob. Well, the Kazula Bob might be a great idea, but you've got a big problem. You don't have one yet. And that's tricky. Well, with a 3D printer, you might be able to make a real working Kazula Bob right now. Say, it's done in an hour. But in a world where everyone has a 3D printer, you could share that working Kazula Bob with everyone in like 10 hours. 
That is amazing. And as an inventor, that is a world that I want to live in. Yeah. Okay, so I actually think that if we lived in a world with a lot of 3D printers, we'd see objects and the ideas for objects go viral, just like YouTube videos do. That's why I've been working on a printer that costs not $30,000, not $3,000, but as you heard in my intro, <laughs> the world's first $100 3D printer. And I'm not the only one that thinks this is a great idea. A lot of people do. Who here thinks this is a great idea? Can I see some hands? All right. <laughs> it's hard to say no to. <laughs> okay, of course, it's not perfect, so we're working on it, though. And these, these are some people in my local hackerspace, and they think it's a great idea, too, and so they are actually right now working on it, and they're making it become a reality. And <clears throat> I also ran a crowdsource funding campaign, and thousands of people took their hard-earned dollars and said, yes, I want everyone to have a magic wand. I love that idea too. And their ideas are even more valuable than their money. My goodness. Together between the hackerspace and the community of people that are getting behind this idea, we have, we have a community that is building a tool that's meant to be understood and shared and it's really meant to be modifiable. So if you get one of these 3D printers and you don't like something about it, you know what to do because we think it can print itself. <laughs> so feel free to print a modified version. Okay. <clears throat> so in recognition of all the hard work that this community has done and in the spirit of TED, I have some announcements to make because we have had some amazing advancements in the last couple of months. Not only is this the world's first $100 3D printer, it is the, fir <laughs> it is the first 3D printer to snap together like Lego, which is really important because it makes it really easy to build as a kit. Okay, now I'll walk over here. <laughs> and it is the first 3D printer to ship in an envelope. That's just as of three days ago. And that's important because it's tough to get these to everyone, including the people in the third world, if they're big honking things. And if they're not tough, <laughs> they are. They're really tough. OK. <clears throat> but if we do get these printers all around the world, that's not really going to be good enough because you still need a computer to run one. So what's the point? Well, that's why, that brings me to my last announcement. We have been designing this printer to run from an audio signal. To get this printer to print something, you play some really bad sounding music <laughs> to it. Trust me, it sounds like screeching. Okay, but it works from an audio signal. And that's really important because th that means this is the first 3D printer that can run from any smartphone. And if I back up to this graph, that's, uh, that's smartphones getting used all over the world. So I'm really excited about that. Now, <clears throat> I would like everyone to just give a round of applause for the community that is building this printer. Okay, that is my talk, but I still have nine minutes left, which is wonderful because I'm enjoying this. <laughs> I had another talk, and it was all about how the things I've done to warp my mind into being this weird inventor type, and you've said a whole bunch of them. Thank you. <laughs> not, not in any of the same wording, though. <laughs> so it's, it's just wonderful. Um, so I think I'm going to continue talking about that. So I'll just start with some of the things that... I do that are a little unusual, and I think that'll just get me going. So one of the things I do is I work really, really long hours. 
Like, all I do is work. And I'll <laughs> I really mean it. Like, I work in the shower because I'm thinking. A lot of my work is thinking. I work in the shower. I work while I'm brushing my teeth. Sometimes I brush my teeth for like 15 minutes and I, I'm bleeding and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Move on to the next subject, right? <clears throat> okay, so the reason that I do this is that if you can make your whole world, everything you do, your project, then your mind kind of has this warped reality where it's like everything becomes a 3D printer for me, right? Everything, if I grab this chair, can I grab this chair? Okay. Now I look at this thing, and when I work really, really hard, I just see pieces of my 3D printer. If it's shiny, I see a mirror that I'm hitting with a laser. Uh, the legs, an obvious one. My printer has legs, and actually, I don't ship them. <laughs> because you can pick any, any kind of legs. My printer, uh, inside it, there are mirrors, and they rotate on thread. And here, in the cushion, I see thread. And so when you really, really focus on just your project, then your mind becomes just kind of weirdly twisted. And everywhere you go in the world, you know, you see a wheel and you're just, you know, that's, that's the wheel on my printer. This, the scale of things completely change. <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's a really great concept. It gets you into another situation. When you work really, really hard and you're really, really excited about your project, it's very, very hard to sleep. <laughs> and so, it's not, it's not, I'm not saying that I, I have to force myself to work all the, all the time. I actually can't get to sleep and love the project so much that I can't, I don't want to get rid of it. And I love this situation. So, you know, the most intense time for me was this week. I worked three 36-hour shifts, 36-hour long days. I'm not saying this is healthy. It's not. I did it. Oh, it was rough. <laughs> but an interesting thing happens when you focus that hard on your project. All of those 70,000 thoughts are all about your project. And when you do fall asleep, you keep working in your sleep. And the ideas that you have are like as wild as your wildest dreams. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if I should give this example, but you know, I've been I've been asleep, and and my girlfriend turns into the printer, and my printer turns into the girlfriend. It's like, whew, okay, won't get into it any further. <laughs> okay, so another thing that I like to do is completely redefine what a problem is. I actually I think I should come up with a new word that replaces what I define problems as. I define problems as opportunities for solutions. I don't really see them like the Oxford de uh, definition uh, where they're these unwelcome and harmful situations. That is very foreign to me. When somebody comes to me with a problem, I immediately am like enamored with it and I just, I can't wait to, because there's so much value. When you have a problem, that means that there's, there's a solution in my opinion, there's always a solution. <laughs> and, and that means there's an opportunity to offer a whole bunch of value to the world. So I am just pumped about every problem I find out about. And when I'm inventing, I run into problems over and over and over. And that gets me more excited, not less. When I try this, and then this, and then this, and they all fail, I think, this is awesome. I know exactly how not to do like 40 things. Whew, that's information I needed to know. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah, these are wonderful thinking methods. Another one that I, I really like is practicing emotional control. And, and I, what, I'm, what I'm doing there is I'm constantly affecting myself to feel good no matter what. But the reason that you need to do that is because it's, it's not really about how you happen to feel about something. It's more about how can I get myself to feel to get the most done. That's the goal. And with a lot of emotional energy, you can do so much more than you ever thought. 
like work 36 hour shifts, which are impossible. I know, I was having heart palpitations. Don't do it. <laughs> uh, so emotional control is great. If you can kind of learn all these ways to affect your own emotions, then you get, you get to really become whoever you want to be. You get to pull off whatever, whatever you want to. And having a really, a really open and uh, sort of possibility-seeking mindset is, is exactly what I've been up to with this 3D printer. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.